Hello everybody and welcome back to a midweek video. Yes, I am not going to call it the Wednesday one shot anymore and the reason why is because I don't know if I can always promise Wednesday. Sometimes it's Thursday. Who knows? <laughs> so let's take the pressure off. Today we're actually going to be doing a very short video but it's going to be fun and I'm just going to explain to you the process of becoming Sylvie Vaton. I'm going to butcher it. She is actually a Bulgarian and French singer and actress. Ça fait deux minutes, 35 de bonheur. I am actually kind of new to learning about her. I was chilling and I looked down and on my phone I have some messages from Mrs. Erin Parsons. Since she knows I like to do retro recreations and ads, she was like, you should totally do this one. So I, of course, was game for it. And when Erin Parsons is giving you makeup advice, you take it. She even said, and bleach your eyebrows. And I thought, you got it. I love it. I love it. You guys, I should have done this sooner. And I'm so glad that Erin said something because I love my brows like this. I don't have to do anything to them. I don't, and I was really, really struggling. I was, uh, it was such a pain in the ass constantly having to figure out how I felt like doing my brows that day. And sometimes they would be too big. Sometimes they'd be too dark. Sometimes they were messy. Sometimes they looked great, but I just was constantly struggling with them. I barely had to do anything. I put a little bit of like brow gel in them to fluff them up and a few strokes of like a really light brow pencil throughout and boom, they're done so quick. But it also helps that I did just update my hair. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through all of the steps that it took to get to this look completed. And uh, that way you, if you feel like maybe doing something similar or just want to know how I did the transformation, that uh, we can do it together. So let's dive in. I'm going to scooch here because there's going to be cutaways. For the base, I did use the Fluid Sheer Giorgio Armani. I forgot to hit record for that part, but that is what I have like primed on my skin. And then I did my trick, my favorite trick, which is add a foundation to a moisturizer so that you have kind of like a homemade BB cream. It's just not as much coverage. It's really light on the skin. I don't look like I have a lot of makeup on and it's going to make this last twice as long, which is great. And so I have the Keys Protect Your Light Moisturizer with the Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin foundation and it's just mixed together. I work it in with my hands. I don't even need a brush to do it. I prefer to do it with my hands because that way I get the exact coverage that I'm looking for and I can just work it into the skin. I also took the Yensa concealer and just did that in obvious areas, which is like under eyes, T-zone, you know the drill. I also just took a brush and gently patted the double wear foundation powder by Estee Lauder over areas that I felt like I tend to need some extra coverage, which is under my eyes and on my chin and a little bit around this part of my nose because that's where I feel like my foundation tends to separate or disappear throughout the day. This is the photo that I was trying to replicate that I thought the outfit and the hair and the makeup was something that I can do. One of the key words that Erin was mentioning was soft for my features, like soft looks, softer makeup, softer eyeshadows, really soft like skin as far as the foundation and the coverage. Try to like not do super full, which I totally agree with. And as you guys know, I like to do mostly BB creams anyway. This palette that I chose is the 351 Icy Fantasy, which this one is like a little bit more uh, pastels that are really vibrant in color. They almost can read neon. They're really bright. And I think if I went with something that was more of like an autumn palette where the colors are even more autumnal and less of this like bright, bright color, I think that would be fun to try as well. So I'm going to do that one next. The dark green for the crease, I did the Fairy Tales Storybook Cosmetics palette with this green one right here. And that's how I got that shape. I did a brown liner instead of a black and just really softened the edge of it a little bit and a little bit of the eyeliner also under the eye. And then for the lips, I used this color. It is called Skinny Dip by Tarte. And I forgot about how much I loved this color. It's just a really neutral lip tone on me. It doesn't have pink in it. It doesn't really have an orange in it either and I love the way it looks. And I also was thinking about how I need to somehow allocate the KKW one, I think, or KKW nude number one. It's a lip lipstick that I was using for ages that people always complimented me when I had it on. And if I could find that, that was the perfect creamy nude on me. I need that color though. I need the color. 
For the blush, I just went in with a really peachy uh, neutral blush. Because I wanted it to be peach but bright, I used this palette, which is kind of a newer palette for me, the Seraphine Lillian Blossom one. I went with this over top of a deeper rose, which is called Call My Blush by Bare Minerals. So I have both on. I just wanted it to have a brighter cheek color, but then also bring it in with some of a warm peach. So I feel like it came out pretty good and I did a little bit across the nose too. I have no bronzer on. Now let's talk about the hair. I didn't curl my hair like hers and the reason why is because I had just Put these extensions in and I don't want to add any heat to them right now. I can't wash them for 48 hours so I didn't want to mess with them too much. I just left them as is. I think even if I did try to do her because I when I put these extensions in I wanted them to be really long. I'm just having this moment where I want stupid long blonde hair like annoyingly long so I don't want to cut any of the length off. These are 22 inch. I even considered almost getting 24 but I knew that would be pushing it for me when I'm trying to sleep and I don't want to like yank on it. So I pull, I put it in a braid or pull it back into a ponytail when I sleep so that the hair stays out of my way. But there's a lot of this going on when I'm tossing and turning. I'm probably like whapping my husband in the face with it. But I love the um, length of this hair and I just didn't, because it's new, I didn't want to curl it. I will play around with it obviously in different styles, but I'm loving it. You guys, I'm loving it. I have been on the search for a new brand of hair extensions that were affordable ever since ProExtensions.com went out of business, which is so so sad but their hair quality was the best you can find anywhere and it was a hundred bucks so I found this brand instead and I'm giving it a shot and so far so good I did a lot of like checking reviews seeing what people are saying about it looking at photos thank goodness for reviews and people saying how the hair has worked for them I have been doing my own hair for so long though because of my agoraphobia so I just like of course I'm going to talk about agoraphobia I can't have a video where I don't say that word <laughs> always have been into doing my own hair because I just really like the comfort of my own home plus I actually enjoy it I actually enjoy doing it it takes me a whole day but it's fun. I start in the morning, bleach my hair, and then I wash it out and I put in toner usually. I usually don't use color, but this time I wanted to do color because I really wanted to color my hair specifically to match this and Sylvia's hair color. And it's still a little bit toned. I used a toning shampoo, so it's a little bit toned. This will all wash out and it'll start to match even more because this is starting to look a little more yellow to me than the hair itself, but it'll start to blend as soon as everything gets washed. It's just, I have, I can't wash wash the hair for 48 hours so that the tape holds. I know that some people might think it's a little weird, like do you not wash the hair when you get it? I don't. And I hope that's not gross to anybody, but the reason why is because I've done that before and I've accidentally gotten the tape wefts wet and then they really didn't stick. And I'm just not going to risk it. I know it's probably strange. You can wash, I've, I've in the past, I've like held it under the sink and just washed the bottom part, but even then, I'm just like, nope, I just, I don't want to mess with it because then you have to blow it out. You have to blow dry it. And I just worry about screwing them up. I put them in. I'll just hold on for 48 hours and then I will give my head, oh, I'll probably wait even a little bit longer and then I'll give it all a good rinsing and cleaning and wash the hair. And then the tape hopefully will hold. That's always the test with new extensions is will the tape hold? How good is the tape? But I could always replace the tape if the hair is just really good and everybody. Th these hairdressers were saying even in the comments were like, this is the best tape and extensions I found. So as soon as I saw two hairstylists say that, I was like, all right, I'm sold. I'm going to get them. And I got them for like 120 bucks. I got two boxes. Um, that's about 40 wefts. I typically do the whole 40 and I can fit all 40 into my head, but they're sandwiches. So you technically have 20 strands that are sandwiched. So the hat is perfect for this, the Calvin Klein that I just got, and it's hot though. I'm actually gonna take it off. And actually, I'll take it off so you guys can see the hair. I really like that, I think this is the second time I've used that specific bleach kit, and it comes out really good every time. So that is my 
10 out of 10 recommend a bleach kit if you're doing your roots, if you like doing your own hair at home. I'm not gonna suggest that you do just because you can screw up your hair really bad. So if you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Just go to a professional. I always say go to a professional, but if you are agoraphobic <laughs> and you have a hard time sitting in a chair, you probably already learned how to do your own hair. It works for me, but I think it looks so good. I think it turned out really nice and I'm loving it. So I did the lilac straight lashes and the ones I went with today are Dawn. So these will last me 10 days and it's going to be so nice to have them in. I've been back to putting these in just because I much prefer to wake up and my makeup be ready. I've been really busy. Whenever my life is really busy, that's when I start doing these more often just because I don't like applying mascara. I don't. <laughs> I hate it. And this is nice because I just look done. You know, I also got a pair of originals because these are my favorites. The originals in the 14 millimeter on me are like my everyday perfect natural looking lash that just give me that perfect amount of length and volume without being like too fake looking. And those are the ones I love. I also had some points saved up. So mega bonus for me, I was able to get a brand new free because I had points Lilac Street Pro glue. And this is my favorite one. The reason why I like the Pro Glue is because I prefer this Comey wand to go through the lash and really get in there. So it just gives a little bit more of um, the black just kind of helps keep the lashes look a little bit fuller at the root. But that is it. That is the finished makeover look. I had so much fun creating this look. Shout out to Erin Parsons for sending me these reference photos so that I can do a re retro, sort of a retro recreation. And I will see you guys on the vlog that's coming up over the weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like to and subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys on the next one.